Okay, well, welcome to the world of algebra. And algebra is kind of a scary topic for some people, but really it's not that bad. What throws people off in algebra is the language of algebra. It sounds different than regular math. And the reason why it sounds different is because in algebra, there are letters mixed in with numbers. But no fear. All you, I mean, it sounds weird, um, and you might get phased by how it sounds, but as long as you can understand the language of algebra, it's actually not that hard at all. So in algebra, the letters are used to say that something is unknown. Um, in elementary school, you, I, I bet you you did algebra questions without even knowing it. Um, whenever the t a teacher gave you like a question where there was like an empty box or a question mark or something like that, those are algebra questions. Instead of a box or a question mark, in algebra, we use letters in its place. So this actually means right here, 3y minus 6 is the way you say it. Um, 3, and there's nothing in between the y and the 3, so it's 3 times y minus 6. You're probably asking, well, what is y? I don't know. What is y? It's unknown. So you can re kind of read this as 3 times some number, some unknown number, minus 6. That's all it's saying. Now, you can't really answer that. There's types of uh, questions where you have to answer what is y. In this case, we don't. There's no equal sign here. So this is what's called an expression. And expressions are basically um, without equal signs. They're math statements without equal signs. 3 times some number minus 6. Now the y, the letter, we can give it a name because it changes. It could be anything. We don't know what it is right now. Um, so because it, we can say that it changes, we can call that letter a variable. All letters are variables. They vary. They could be anything. 3 times could be anything minus 6. That's all it is. And expressions are just that. They just are stating something. It's like saying, I had eggs for breakfast. I don't need you to answer the question. I'm just telling you, I had eggs for breakfast. 3y minus 6. I'm not telling you to do anything with that. I'm just telling you, 3y minus 6. That's an expression. Expressions are different from things like this, which would be an equation. And equations have equal signs. They're math expressions with, I should say without up here, my bad, with equal signs. So let me just go over that again really quickly. Expressions are without equal signs, and equations are with equal signs. They're mathematical expressions with equal signs. Well, in this case, we would have to do some stuff to figure out what actually is y. So what, the way you would read this is 3 times some number equals 6. And I'm sure a lot of you can are screaming out, no, oh, I think it's 2, and you'd be right. 3 times some number equals 6. That's an equation. And again, um, that letter is the variable. It could be anything, although in this case, in an equation, we know exactly what it is. It'll be 2. Okay, so all, all you have to learn to, uh, in this first section here is that if there's no equal sign in something, it's an expression. If there is an equal sign, it's an equation. Equations, you have to give an answer for what is the unknown letter, in this case, y. Expressions, all you can really do with them is just simplify them to make them as simple as possible, but you don't have to actually figure out what the missing letter is, or what the letter is. Okay, so we're going to stick with expressions here. We'll come to equations later. I um, just want to get used to talking algebra style. So if you have a plus 8, what does that mean? Well, a plus 8, what's the variable in a plus 8? 
When I say the variable, all I'm saying is, what's the letter? What's the unknown thing? Obviously, it's A. So it's some number, some missing number, plus 8. And we're using A. Why do we use A? I don't know. It just felt like using A. There's no other reason. Why do we use Y up here? No other reason. Just felt like it. Could have used X. Could have used Q. Could use Z. Cap could have used capital G. Could have used a cloud. It doesn't matter. So here's the expression A plus 8. Um, what is the translation? What does this mean, A plus 8? Well, all it means in simple English is that it is some number some number plus 8. That's one way to say it. Another way to say it is you could say it's some number, well what's another word for plus? Um, increased by 8. Or you could say some number added by 8. Some number more than 8. So there's lots of words that we can use instead of increase by or plus. Um, the sum of some number and eight. Sum is the number for, for adding. Okay, so um, that's all it means. How about this? B minus two. If you're told the expression B minus two. Well, what is this? What is the variable? Obviously the variable is the letter, it's B. Um, what does B minus two mean? It just means some number, or you can say a number. Some number minus two. There's another way you could say this. You could say some number, what is another way of saying minus? Subtracted by two. Subtracted by two. Or uh, you could say some number reduced by two. Some number less two. Um, yeah, there's lots of way, different ways to say minus or subtracted by, decreased, all sorts of uh, words you could use. Now, with, with adding, it doesn't really matter the order, but for subtracting, it does. And I'll show you later um, where the wording, you have to really uh, be careful and make sure that you have it in the right order. Okay, let's say you have this as the English translation. Seven minus some number. What would these two things be? 7 minus some number. Okay, so we have 7 and take away some number. Well, we don't know what the some number is. We don't know what that number is, so we'll just pick a letter. Pick any letter you like. Well, I'm going to just stay with the, the pattern here and say C. But you don't have to in your notes. You can write down whatever you like. You could write down a star. You could draw a pigeon. You could... Uh, Use the letter X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter to me. So my, in my case here, I pick my variable, variable to be C, seven minus some number. The other way around would not work. Okay, seven minus some number, because in subtracting, um, the order does matter. Seven times some number. Sorry, four times some number, I'm big on seven. Four times some number, how would you uh, write that? Well, um, four, times, and some number, I can just pick whatever letter I want. I'm going to be really creative and just put the letter D. So my variable is D. So I could write that. Here's the thing. Uh, this is kind of lame. I wouldn't do this if I were you. It's not wrong. It's just kind of like childish, putting the times 4 times D. Other options, more cooler options, would be this. 4 D. There's nothing in between. That means multiply. 4D is the way that you're supposed to start doing it now. It's the cool way of showing it. You could do 4 dot D. That means times. You could do 4 in brackets. D in brackets. That means the same thing as well. Or you could do 4 in brackets D. Or you could do 4 and D in brackets. There's lots of ways to show multiply. They all mean the same thing. But this is the best answer. 4 times D with the 4 right next to it. Okay, next. 6 with a line and N. Well, obviously our variable here I picked is N. What does this mean? It means 6 divided by some number. 6 divided by 
some number. Or you know what, instead of some number, I'm going to put 6 divided by a number. Or another fancy way of, of uh, saying divided by is um, the quotient of 6 and n. The quotient of 6 and a number. You could say that. Uh, 10 plus 2f, well obviously the variable is f, what does this mean? It means 10, the simple answer would be 10 plus, 10 plus, what does this mean? 2, and there's nothing in between the 2 and the f, so it must be multiply, 10 plus 2 times some number, 10 plus 2 times some number. And again, another way to say it, 10 increased by 2 multiplied by one num by some number. Or you could say uh, 10 added to the product of 2 and some number. What about this 20 times a number decreased by 8? 20 times a number decreased by 8. Um, let's pick a letter. Let's, I'm going to pick uh, X. Now, if you're going to use X in algebra, make sure it's the handwriting X. Because if you just use the simple X, it's going to get mixed up with multiply. So that's why I use the handwriting X, and you'll see my little X's like that quite a bit from here on in for algebra. Anyways, so that's the letter that I've picked. You can pick, again, whatever letter you like. 2 times a number decreased by 8. Sorry, 20. 20 times a number. So 20 times a number, I could do 20 times x, but remember I said back here that's kind of the lame way of doing it. No one does that. To show multiply, just put the number and the letter right next to it. So 20x decreased by 8. Decrease means subtract 8. 20 times a number, decreased by 8. There. How about a number subtracted from 6? Let's pick our variable. I'm going to pick uh, w. S a number subtracted from 6. Now, we have two choices here. Is it going to be w minus 6 or is it 6 minus w? A number subtracted from 6. So, so who had it first? The 6 had it first. And we're subtracting from it. So this is actually wrong. This is right. S a number subtracted from 6. Tricky wording there. Alright, how about this one? Obviously here the variable is w. I don't know why this variable column. It's really easy. Um, how would you write this? Well, you'd probably say 16 minus some number all divided by 2. 16 minus some number, or a number, divided by, actually I should say, all divided by 2. If you just said 16 minus w divided by 2, then you might think 16 minus w divided by 2. And these two things are different expressions. So I prefer to show that we're the 2 is dividing both the 16 and the w. 16 minus some number, all divided by 2. If you don't put the all, you might think what I had just erased there. Okay. Now we get tricky. One third of a number. Pick whatever variable you like. I'm going to pick uh, z one-third of a number. Now remember before in percents, of meant multiply. So you could say one-third times z. But what do we say about this? That's not cool anymore. Let's not do that. Let's just call this one-third. And what do we do with the z? Put it right next to it. One-third z. Um, which also just to mess with you a little bit, is the same thing as this. Anyways, this is the, the best answer for now. What about this? W squared, I like the W being the variable. 
Uh, well, we don't know what W is. We just call it some number squared. Give us what little two means, right? Squared. What's another way of saying squared? You could just say some number multiplied by itself, or some number times itself. That is what squared means, right? Squared means some number, or that number times itself. Okay, not times two. Number squared is that number times its own self. Okay, ugly one here. The reciprocal of a number plus the cube of that number. Okay, so before your brain starts to explode, let's just throw down a letter that we like. We haven't done yet. Let's do, uh, let's do G. The reciprocal of a number plus the cube of that number. You know, reciprocal, if you forgot, is the same thing as saying the flip. So if we have um, a number, which we're talking, we're saying it's G, and we flip G, now this might uh, really mess with you, if we flip G, it becomes what? Well, remember, any number is what is a fraction? So like, for example, 5 as a fraction is five over <clears throat> is five over one. The reciprocal of five over one, if we flipped five over one, we would get one fifth. Right? Okay. Same thinking, but we don't know what the number is in the question. It's some number. And we decided to pick G as that number. So instead of saying G, the reciprocal of G would be remember, any number is a fraction is that thing over one. Flip this, you get 1 over g. So that is a reciprocal of a number, 1 over g. So the reciprocal of a number plus the cube of that same number. So we're using that same number again, which is the unknown letter we're going to pick g. Cube meaning to the power 3. That's the answer to that one. Ugly, isn't it? Okay, here's a good one. Mr. Watson's age squared plus the loonies in his wallet. Okay, first off, do we know what Mr. Watson's age is? I don't know, maybe he told you in class, but I don't know what it is exactly. So we don't know what Mr. Watson's age is. So that's the same thing as saying a number or some number. We don't know what it is. So, what, what letter should we call Mr. What should we stand in for Mr. Watson's age? Because it is some mystery number. Let's just pick W for Watson. Let's pick M for Mr. We've done enough W's. That's unknown. Um, plus the loonies in his wallet. How many loonies does he have in, in his wallet? Well, I don't know. And, and I don't. I hope you don't know. Um, so, that's also a, something that's unknown. It's not the same as of his age, though. It's some different number that we don't know what it is. So we should pick a different letter other than M. Let's pick Q. Oh, you know what? L for loonies. Let's just keep it simple. Let's do L. I'm going to do the handwriting L. So we'll say Mr. Watson's age is M, and we'll say the loonies in his wallet are L. So let's change this into uh, an algebraic expression. Mr. Watson's age which is m squared, m squared, plus, plus, the loonies in his wallet, which all we know is we're saying is l, because we don't know what that is, so it would be like this, m squared plus l. Okay, I think what I've done here, I've taken something that you thought, oh, I get this, and now I've really messed with you. Um, well, I guess that's, that's just what I do. Here, are your skill testing questions. So if you could fill in this table with what I've given you, that, that, and that, and uh, um, fill in what I, I have not given you, I guess, and have it done, show it to me, you know the drill. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.